Hi there, it's Nick Vujicic here from the Ministry of Life Without Limbs. Yes, I was born without limbs. And it's not like one day I woke up and looked myself in the mirror and said, <gasps> what happened? I knew as a kid I was born this way. No doctor knows why I was born this way. Uh, my parents don't know why. And when kids ask me what happened to me, I just say cigarettes. Look, Having limbs is awesome. It's an awesome idea that I used to dream and dream and dream about because I thought if I just had arms and legs, then I would have no stress. Well, we understand that many people with arms and legs still deal with this thing called stress. And welcome to this relentless series. Uh, we have branded it such as such where I am talking about some things where we can either hold on to the good things that we know is true through the Bible to hold on to the good things, hold on to the faithfulness of God. But then also some of these series like this one is specific to overcoming things, overcoming stress, overcoming despair, overcoming anger. We've just done a couple of those uh, in the past months, and I hope you've been encouraged. And please, if you've been encouraged, make sure you share it with someone else. And today's message, I think, is relevant for everyone. Uh, you know, when we're talking about life, when we're talking about the ups and downs, it's always about, you know, stresses of life, uh, the, 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 the stress of what people think of me, the stress of what I think of me, the stress of, you know, with 2020 and all the ups and downs and changes of uncertainty, um, you know, a, a lot of unknowns. And the scariest thing about the unknowns is how long will the unknowns remain as unknown? And, uh, you know, there is a point where we need to understand how we uh, are human, we do have emotions to process that, not to suppress it and not to bottle it all up and then blah, explode. Uh, but to, how do we deal with that? You know, God never said that I'm going to give you a life with no stress. He's going to give you a life of abundance, right? More abundant, which means higher highs, lower lows. And I don't know anyone in the Bible who had a stress-free life. I mean, literally, uh, we understand that everyone is human with the soul, spirit, mind, and body. We all go through pain and suffering, and especially when loved ones are going through something or, you know, things that we normally depend on or took for granted are now gone. Our job, the way we even do life. Um, when we go through different changes, stress hijacks us and understanding how our body reacts to a challenge or demand or even change. Uh, if you don't understand what stress is, um, look, I mean, that there is obviously some positive stress that can help you to avoid danger or meet a deadline and all that. But seriously, when you sometimes are just trapped in this merry-go-round of constant stress, anxiety, frustration, anger, it's like you're thinly stretched. Your bandwidth can only take you so far. And I don't know about you, but I can't do my life alone. You know, I'm not a lone ranger. F for me, um, you know, even being the person who goes around the world, uh, you know, trying to encourage people to never give up, to know that God's with us, that, that um, no matter what we face, that our God is bigger than our problem. And it's us, I think, reminding ourselves how big God really is. And, you know, how many times we look back and say, well, wait a second, that was so unexpected. And that's why it was so stressful. Or maybe something happened and someone said something and it triggers you. And, and you, you realize, oh, my gosh, the reason why I'm stressed is because something happened to me five or 10 or 15 years ago that's building up that stress of an undealt issue. For me, I'll give you two stories in, in, in my personal life. First of all, 2020 was quite difficult. Um, you know, everything around me changed. And, and the one thing I know that always remained was the faithfulness of God. I, I knew that God hadn't left me. I knew that God hadn't found 2020 any more surprising than 2019. He knows exactly where I'm at. He knows exactly what I'm feeling. But somehow it's almost like, but I can't connect my faith to my head sometimes. 
And it's like, man, my head's like so thick sometimes. You know, it's like you look at the people in the, uh, you know, trapped in the desert and the wilderness for 40 years where they forget about the faithfulness of God and the presence of God that He will always provide for you. So chill out, man. But it's still hard. Do you know that, I mean, even 2020, this year, I had almost like a relapse of the reality of having no arms and no legs. Do you know it sucks having no arms and no legs? And I know deep down that really the issue is my heart and my mind and my spirit. It, you know, just sometimes, especially with my kids, I want to be able to pick them up. I want to play with them. I want to, you know, be able to drive a car and take them to school. And there are just some things that, you know, kind of pricked me in, in the last couple of months because, you know, my wheelchair breaks down. I'm looking for new caregivers. Um, you know, we're, 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 we're re-transplanting our whole family out of state. I mean, there's a lot of change. And in that change, it's not like I was crippled by fear, but man, it's been a little hard. And I've been a little angry. And I've been a little stressed. Now, how do we like de-stress? One of the greatest ways that I've um, de-stressed for me is to call a friend personally. Um, you know, I have a couple friends, maybe two or three that I call maybe two or three, uh, uh, you know, maybe twice a month, let's say. Two or three people I call twice a month to see how they're doing. They ask how I'm doing. I know they're praying for me every single day, asking people to pray for you and knowing that they're praying for you and you just sharing with them in confidence um, you know, that, that they're just going to take it to the Lord. You know, they may or may not be able to give me advice, but just to know that a brother knows what I'm going through. Um, sister, if you need another sister, God's going to provide you another sister to talk to because that's why family is there. Brotherhood, sisterhood, we are here for each other. And Nick could not do this alone. And, and with all the, if you will, the rhythm of what we've been doing, whether it's on the um, you know, ministry side and going to preach the gospel and not knowing, well, how are we going to preach the gospel if the stages close up? And, and in that trust and in that prayer within our ministry, we've taken it before the Lord. And now we've seen that any quarantine regulations or restrictions and limitations have only actually fast-tracked our long-term goals to help us reach another billion souls for Jesus Christ. We're still seeing people in the prison ministry uh, giving their life to Jesus, getting trained then to start another Bible study in another prison. Like, it's awesome, man. Like, God's still moving. God's still in control. And when we're talking about, you know, Nick, motivationally speaking and doing some other things that actually make the living, if you will, the most of the living for my family and provision. We know that God's the God of, of, of provision. He always pays for what he orders. Uh, there's always provision for vision, and he's never going to change. He's always going to provide for my family. He's always going to direct me. He's not just playing hide and seek, right? But it just sometimes takes time. Time, not just to talk to friends, but to process things. Maybe you've never journaled and you need to start journaling. I love journaling. That helps me. I love turning on worship music when I just when I just don't even know what to say and I internalize a lot and I don't even sometimes talk to my, my my wife about what I'm feeling. I just turn on that worship music and let it play. Let it play in my office. Let it play in the house. Sometimes I used to sleep to worship music. Because of my anxiety, we all go through ups and downs. Yes, this evangelist who talks about the power of God still is human. We're all human. We're not superhuman. And that's the beauty where I'm not telling you the exact keys and how I did it. It's how God helps us all to overcome all adversity, all stress, all anxiety, where we can cast all our cares upon him because he loves us. You know, for me, focusing in on the circumstance sucks. And the more you focus on the circumstance, the bigger it seems and the smaller you seem. But it's not about how big the circumstance is compared to you. Remember, it's about comparing your circumstance 
to the all awesome power and all knowing, almighty, most high living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So stop focusing on your circumstance, focus on God. You know, I love it when when we feel like God needs our help and we get the wake up call, God don't need Nick for nothing. God don't owe anything to Nick. God doesn't need to explain to Nick why 2020 is happening and why this and this and this is happening and if he's losing money here and and this is happening and this tragedy happened and that person dies and this closes up and this stops happening and that long-term dream dies and this and this and this is changing and you're not going to have this. God is saying, do you trust me? That's a beautiful thing. When Peter was focusing in on the circumstance, right? And he looked at the waves when he's walking on the water and he sees and feels the wind. When he focuses on the circumstance, he starts sinking. My brother, my sister, don't focus on the circumstance. Fix your eyes on Jesus Christ. And sometimes we're like, oh man, we just gotta, I just gotta do something different to get a different result. I gotta, you know, I gotta do something to to change my circumstance. Now, sometimes God allows us to go to our circumstances. Sometimes he doesn't take the thorn from your side. Sometimes he allows you to go through storms and ups and downs so that you actually depend on him the most to understand his faithfulness and that his grace and his mercy covers you. And so that you can adore him. You know, Martha, in, in, in Luke chapter 10, verse 39 to 42, you know, Mary and Martha, I mean, totally <laughs> distracted, right, by serving in the business. Martha was doing this, doing that, doing this, doing that, doing this, doing that, doing this, doing that, trying this, talking this, and just, Mary was just sitting. Now, can you just fold your arms and, And you know, you lost a job and you're stressed and you're just going to stay in bed and hope that God gives you a job. No. But there is this balance in understanding that there are some times where God wants us to do something, right? Because there are some things that is our job in us making the decision to do what God's called us to do and to put our hands and feet in action. But then we sometimes in stress get so hijacked by our emotions, we're caught in this merry-go-round of non-stop activity and we stop when we're burnt out. And then it's too late. Don't wait till it's too late. Stop being a Martha where you're just doing, doing, doing without just being. You're a human being, not a human doing. And God don't need you to do a thing. He'll tell you to do everything you can, right? When it's in your control, if you will, to do something or make it right with your enemy or pray or give or uh, encourage someone else, you got to You know, do what God's called you to do in action, right? Because faith without works is dead. But when when we're talking about stress, do you know what we need to do? Sit. Stop. Breathe. And remind yourself, God's in control. It's going to be okay. You know, sometimes we need visuals. Sometimes we need like, I, I, I think I'm going to actually buy an anklet, you know, like one of those wristbands, you know, like chill out, dude. Something that's a lot, little bit more like Christianese, like, dude, I'm in control, says God, right? Something like that, like just a little humor, just like, Nick, relax. I got this. Nick, it's okay. Trust me. You know, and it's, 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 it's this, it's this catching of yourself it's not saying that you're never going to have stress it's not it's not saying that you're never going to have those emotions it's catching that thought it's holding that thought captive and then replacing it with an action or a word from the lord or a time of worship a time of silence a time of meditating a time of remembering what god has done Remembering what God has given you. Remembering that he will always give you what you need. And when you don't 
get what you think you need, just do go to www. Ready? Wait, word, worship. www. Wait, word, worship. Wait on the Lord. Cast your cares upon him. Right? First Peter 5, 7. Casting all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Do you believe that God in heaven cares for you? He cares for you, not because of what you did, not because of what you've done. And he cares for you despite of the bad things you've done. He loves you right now. And he's given you all the promises that you can hold on to in full confidence, which is the Bible, the word. Hold on. Hold on to a verse that that your spirit leaps in. Start you know, maybe memorizing scriptures. What's the scripture you're going to memorize for yourself? I remember that I used to do that a lot, especially when I am in a lot of stress. Worship. You're tired of the worship music you've got? Okay, then find a new song. But don't ever think that worship itself gets tiring. Remind yourself who he is. He's the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You don't have to hide from upcoming difficult moments or being stressed about the future. Just do what you can today. Do your best and trust God in the rest with relationships, deadlines. Maybe you have to reset your own expectations on manageable goals. Help yourself to deal with your stress psychologically maybe you need to talk to a counselor maybe you need some help maybe you need some accountability what's the one thing now that you can focus on a short-term mid-term long-term goal god's with you my friend i'm talking to you for those of you who know god if you really know god then you really believe he's in control then you take time to pray you take time to die daily to yourself and live for him. Remember the cross. Remember your salvation. And remember that God Almighty is watching over you. And he'll not not let you go through more than you can handle. My believing friend, let me say an encouraging prayer right now. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for those of us who know you, those of us who love you, who've trusted you. We thank you, Lord, that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you, Lord, that there is no problem or circumstance greater than you. We pray, God, right now for stress, anxiety, depression, addiction, affliction, oppression. Father, all these things to flee in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, that it's your relentless pursuit of your love for us, your relentless pursuit of a purpose that you're building in us. And in these times of storms and trial, you're only purifying us, strengthening us, and helping our dependency on you. We thank you, Lord, that we would lean upon you more. We thank you, God, that you're in control. Help us, Lord God, to catch ourselves in moments of stress. Help us to wait upon you. Help us to put some worship music on and hold on to your word, the promises of God. Help us, Lord God, to find that friend who's going to encourage us and pray for us when we cannot even pray for ourselves. We pray, God, to take away our stress and help us to manage that. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, for all of you out there who don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I tell you, if I didn't believe in the God Almighty, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whose son Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins, I wouldn't be where I am today. You know, um, arms and legs or not, I'm going to have stress. But man, forget about the little things of this world. Forget about 2020 for a second. Forget about the depression and even the attempted suicide that I had at age 10, feeling alone feeling like there was no hope for me here on earth because of bullying at school. No, arms and legs was nothing compared to the biggest disabilities of all, which was sin and death. And Jesus Christ, the living Son of God, he came down as God in the flesh, born of a virgin birth. And he came as a human. He knows what fear is, stress is, 
and everything that a human has ever experienced. He knows our suffering. He knows. And he took it on. He took it all on, and he took all the sin of the world on his shoulders. It was one sacrifice, the atonement of all the sin of the world through the blood of Jesus Christ on a cross. He died for three days and rose again. And in that, he helped me to be free indeed of the two biggest stresses of life, devastations, tragedies, disabilities, defining moments of our soul. It's sin and death. And I'd rather have peace with God in my soul without arms and legs than have everything that the world could ever give me. A peace that I have. That even in the moments of stress, I know he's with me. I know he's never left me and he never will. And maybe you're walking this walk alone and you don't want to walk this alone or walk this walk alone anymore. And you don't have to. Jesus is waiting for you. To say, trust me, come walk with me. So right now, if that's you, would you bow your head and close your eyes? Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. And I'm so sorry of all of my sin. Please forgive me. I want to know you. I want to live for you. Help me to stop what you want me to stop. And help me to do what you want me to do. But God, fill me right now with your Holy Spirit. Give me a hunger to read the Bible, to seek you and to find you. Teach me, God, how to pray and how to live day by day. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Friend, if you just said that prayer, I just want you to know that God has heard your prayer. and We'd love to connect with you. In fact, I've got some really exclusive videos that could be sent to you over the next seven days. If you simply get your cell phone out, if you live in the U.S., to text the word Jesus to the number 66866 or click the link below. If you said that prayer and you want to start that faith, that faith journey with Jesus and you did say that prayer and you want to know what God's plan is for your life, please again text Jesus to the number 66866 or click the link below. And for everyone else, please uh, go to lifewithoutlimbs.org and sign up to our monthly newsletter to let you know how the Nick Vujicic Ministry of Life Without Limbs is continuing to preach the gospel to the world one soul at a time. Thank you for your prayers and your prayerful consideration to financially support us to continue to reach the nations for Jesus Christ. Please share this with someone else, and I'll see you next month. Thank you for joining us this month for Relentless. If you need prayer, you can send us a prayer request or chat online with one of our trained coaches through our website. To watch any of our previous Relentless videos, you can find them on the Life Without Limbs YouTube channel. If you are new to a relationship with Jesus or you just want to grow in your faith, check out Life Without Limbs resources, either the book Unstoppable or one of our daily devotionals. For more information about our ministry, visit us online at lifewithoutlimbs.org. We're so happy you joined us and we look forward to seeing you next month for Relentless.